When using an LED light for a video, a very nasty effect can occur. Dark horizontal bands moving across the screen. These two screenshots were made with the same parameters. The first one was made by connecting the LED light to household power normally. The second screenshot was made by using a simple homemade filtering circuit. Filament lamps work perfectly with household alternating current. However, LED-based lamps go fully on and off 120 times every second, thus producing a flicker human eyes cannot detect, but it does affect video cameras. Here we have the schematic of a widely used LED lamp for home lighting. In addition to the light emitting diodes, the LEDs, the component at the left side of the drawing is a rectifying diode bridge. This bridge changes the household current to pulsating DC. Since the LEDs do not work well and can be damaged, if we apply alternating current, threads it comes out from the outlet. The rectifying diodes convert the alternating current to direct current, and from there it goes to the light emitting diodes, the LEDs, in the form of pulses. 120 pulses every second, producing a flicker that is later seen as horizontal bars going across the image. On the right side of the drawing, there are some special components that limit the amount of current that passes through the LEDs to increase their useful life. In the middle of the drawing, you can see the pulsating direct current that drives the diodes but which also creates an annoying flicker. The diode bridge inside the LED light is intended to work on alternating current, such as the waveform at the left, but it can also be operated by applying direct current, regardless of polarity, since it automatically rectifies it. This means that if we use an additional external diode bridge for rectifying the AC and filtering the resulting DC before applying it to the LED lamp's diode bridge, we can get DC even before connecting the LED lamp. The DC is filtered by a capacitor, which acts as a small energy reservoir to fill in the gaps causing the flicker. If we do this, we will have a direct current with very little ripple so the flicker can be practically taken care of. In a nutshell, if we connect the output of our circuit to the input of the lamp, we will be supplying a rectified and filtered DC current to the LED lamp, thus avoiding the horizontal bars in the image. Here we have a drawing of the finished circuit. It's built around two terminal strips that hold the components together to eliminate the need for soldering. Two other components have been added for safety reasons. One of them is a 4.7 ohm 2 watt resistor to reduce the initial charging current of the capacitor and protect the external diode bridge. The other component is a 2 amp fuse in the event of a short circuit. You can easily see the incoming of the alternating current, how it goes through the fuse and the 4.7 ohm resistor and to the input of the diode bridge, and then goes back to the household supply through the neutral cable shown in white. At the output of the external diode bridge, a red wire hooks the positive of the diode bridge to the positive of an 80 microfarad 350 volt capacitor. It's an electrolytic capacitor. On the other hand, a black cable goes from the negative pin of the diode bridge to the negative terminal of the capacitor. The diode bridge producing a pulsating DC, which is flattened by the capacitor, thus yielding a virtually continuous current, which can be used to power the lamp and achieve a flicker-free light. Before plugging to the household current, we can hook the LED lamp directly to the output of the circuit we just built, that is, to the output of the red and black cables. Regardless of polarity, since the built-in diode bridge inside the lamp will take care of steering the current and allowing only the proper polarity voltage to reach the lamp's internal circuits. We can leave the lamp on for about 5 minutes carefully touching the 4.7 ohm resistor and the diode bridge to make sure they don't get too hot. They should be just barely warm. 
By the way, the resistor should not be in contact with the diode bridge since it can cause the bridge to be damaged. To avoid accidental contact of the components with external metal objects, it is advisable to get a small plastic box to comfortably house the components. This box must be ventilated, making a series of holes in its walls to allow air circulation and to prevent the components from overheating. I hope this video has been useful to you. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel. Ciao a tarim.